This is the Weekly Set, the official podcast of thetotalscreen.com. Episode 181, recorded November 10th, 2018. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rorick. Hello. So today, as usual, we are going to be talking about The Good Place. This time, we're talking about the episode, The Worst Possible Use of Free Will. But before that, we're going to go into a few news stories, a few more than usual this time. Uh, there's a, a lot of stuff going on with, like, movie adaptations or continuations of series, but some other stuff too, but a lot of continuation of series stuff we're covering. So first off, this is a show that neither Will or I watch, that we both used to watch, which is The Walking Dead. I think I, I hung in there a little bit longer than Will, just because I watch everything. <laughs> but even I dropped out of The Walking Dead at a certain point. And, uh, but even if you don't watch The Walking Dead, if you're even mildly aware of it, you know that they've been talking nonstop about how it's like the final episodes of Rick Grime, Andrew Lincoln leaving the show. These are his final episodes this season and so there's this all this build up to it and everyone thought like okay how is Rick Grimes gonna die that was all anybody was saying how is he gonna die because it's the final episodes for Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes well he didn't die they had a, an event that made it appear like he died and then they did like a little post credit scene <laughs> then they did a little post credit scene to reveal he didn't die now this wouldn't normally be news to talk about except that the whole reason he survived and pretty much the reason he's leaving the show in the first place is that they talked before about doing Walking Dead movies that were kind of like in the universe and now we know what those movies are it's a series of movies that are going to be following Rick Grimes by himself or with a different group or whatever and with Andrew Lincoln starring in these set of movies so basically all of this you know the last episodes of Rick Grimes is all just like one big trolling advertisement for these movies some people are reasonably upset about it, being misled that they thought that this was going to be like this big character death moment, and that's not what happened. But uh, that's not really what we're reporting on. We're just reporting on the fact that they're doing these movies with this TV character. They're doing movies with Rick Grimes. I guess like like I guess Andrew Lincoln just didn't want to be on the show anymore, but he's okay with doing like three more movies, or maybe they just handed him like bags of money and said, "If you at least do three movies," or maybe they. <laughs> wanted him for the movies and because of the schedule for the movies he couldn't do the show so they who knows they, who knows who knows what's happening behind the scenes except for the fact that we thought andrew lincoln was leaving and that he was just gonna let his character get killed off but things weren't as simple as they appeared apparently yeah, but that that's it for our first story. Not not too terribly much to talk about, but it's just a big story because The Walking Dead is such a big show. And because so many people were pissed off about the way that ended for his character. But next up is is another thing that has to do with a movie continuation of a series, but this time a series that's been gone for a bit. And oddly, like The Walking Dead has a spinoff series that's currently airing, which is uh Breaking Bad is gonna have a sequel movie, a continuation. Yeah, should, I should wait till we get to the Deadwood part to say this, but everything was movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, so it's, uh, Jesse is, uh, it, it, the movie is going to focus on Jesse and other characters following the events of the series. And that's pretty much all we know about it. But it's just kind of like crazy because Breaking yeah. Bad, you know, is such a good show, had such a good we, ending that people didn't love. I think like, they would, uh, revisit Breaking Bad like that. But, well, you we, know what? We, we just it, thought they'd revisit it through aspects of Better Call Saul. Yeah. But which you is know, the spinoff it, series. Vince Gilligan has an idea. Like, I trust him implicitly you know yeah this is unlike the walking dead where it's, it's <laughs> just like a way for amc to leverage the brand to make more money breaking right. bad isn't necessarily like a huge money maker for amc but it's a big prestige series for the network so if, if like, they're doing yeah. a movie this is probably because vince gilligan had a good idea i mean it's it's easy to it's easy to extrapolate and say oh a amc wants movies of like all their marquee dramas now they're, they're just going all in on these movies 
But Breaking Bad's different because I don't think they would have been able to convince Vince Gilligan to do it if he didn't have a good idea himself. You know, AMC couldn't would, will it into existence. Vince Gilligan would have to be on board. What well, also depends on what they're doing with this because Breaking Bad isn't made by AMC. It only aired on AMC. Oh, that's true. If this is a theatrical release movie, which it seems to be, probably has AMC might not even be part of it. That's true. You're right. Because this is, a, it would be Sony. Sony Pictures that makes Breaking Bad. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's different ways that this could be looked at from that. But I, I mean, like, like I said, though, with, with The Walking Dead, you can tell they're, they're making, they're, they're pulling for money, you know? But with Breaking Bad, with, with Better Call Saul, with all of that, it was all about prestige. It's not really a money earner for the network. It's just no. a prestige play. You know, I mean, this would be more like a, a comparative move for AMC would be if they made like, you know, a Mad Men movie or something, another series that has a lot of prestige which means a lot of press are going to talk about it if it happened but it's not going to necessarily have a lot of money that they're they're planning to make from it you know so it's it's just more like prestige but if it is AMC, if they if they are involved in this and they're trying to make hits of all their movies, I'm I'm just waiting for the Comic Book Man movie. <laughs> How about the Talking Dead movie? We have the Walking Dead movie. Yeah, so they're gonna have a theatrical Talking Dead movie. Oh, that, go- that that would be epic, right? Because you know, then then you can get bona fide movie stars. So you have like uh, Chris Hardwick talking to uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt yeah. about about the Walking Dead movie. <laughs> hey, and since it's a theatrical movie, people can protest Chris Hardwick outside the theaters. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> So we got another movie adaptation or continuation of a series. This is a long awaited one though. I mean, these ones kind of came as a bit of a surprise, the Walking Dead one and Breaking Bad one especially, but the Deadwood movie has been talked about since it went off the air, which was, I believe, about a decade ago that, that this, this Deadwood has ended. Been like, this has been like promised, rumored uh, for like literal ages, but well, I something... mean, it was literally when it was canceled, it was canceled canceled with the understanding that they were going to do movies for the to wrap up the storyline. So it was like, right. oh, yeah, we're not going to have a season next year, but we'll have some movies next year. Cut to a decade never- later. <laughs> <laughs> movies never came. Now they're in production. So this isn't a matter of green light. They're, they're filming these now. Yeah, it's like, okay, we're filming. It's happening now. Promise. <laughs> Barring some kind of act of God. And like- Pretty much the entire cast of Original cast is back or you know the living characters obviously you're not going to have like wild bill hickok you know in it oh no um <laughs> but but like all the, the characters that were kind of still alive in it and stuff or that you know that would be alive, alive 10 years later they're going to be in it so like if you look through there's you know of course the leads you have timothy oliphant and, and ian mcshane yeah. are of course back but just m- almost all the sub characters too the doctor the you know all these different people the the one really sad thing that'll be be deeply missed because it was such a huge part of the storyline at the time the series ended is going to be that you know the actor powers booth passed away last year oh that's right he did and so his character cy tolliver was like the big competition for um he was like the antagonist for ian mcshane's character yeah, um, that's gonna be, that's gonna sting. But I mean, the show does take place 10 years after, you know, it's not like they're gonna say, this is the next day, you know? Like, like it's gonna so be there's... like, uh, a Twin Peaks revival where, like, it takes place a set amount of time. Like, they're not gonna say, yeah, oh, tomorrow. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> and just all the actors are 10 years older for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's gonna be later. So they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll have some kind of way to work around that or some kind of thing to point out in the storyline, maybe about that um i mean maybe even not just because after 10 years a lot of times people aren't going to talk about oh yeah remember this guy that died 10 years ago unless it's like more recent in in the story so you know i I don't know but the main point is that most of the original cast is back pretty much everybody that that was alive on the show still and that's alive in real life is back and this has been hotly anticipated for a long time and this is going to be part of a huge year next year for hbo because next year hbo not only has this deadwood thing that's been so long anticipated but they also have the final season of game of thrones and the debut of the Watchmen TV series, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. 
But first up, in relation to Deadwood, um, Deadwood and Westworld shared a lot of filming sets. And it's not the main filming set that they shared, which is the, the main town of, of Sweetwater in, in, um, Westworld or the town of Deadwood in Deadwood. That's, that's a place called Melody Ranch. It's actually near where I live. But another couple of the set locations that Westworld used, mainly like the church where Dolores kind of got her free will. And also the, the one Indian character got his free will as well. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that church and the surrounding town and the towns were also where that massacre happened. Right. Um, which isn't in Sweetwater. It's a different, smaller town there. That whole set burned down, um, at Paramount Ranch, uh, oh, because of the sick. current fires in California right now. That's so terrible. they just swept through and just burned down that whole set. It's been, it was used for other, you know, movies and TV you know, shows. The fires as well. that, uh, Donald Trump said were California's fault and that he's cutting federal funding. Yeah. It's, you know, California's fault and our firefighters' fault. You know, because yeah. firefighters should they should know about fires before they happen, and they should stop you, them before they happen. You know, in, instead of uh, sending FEMA or anything, he's just going to cut federal funding. Yeah, it's 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 great times to be a California with with President Trump. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways, these sets are gone. They're, they're just completely burned to the ground, destroyed. As sad as that is, and, and it, it is a sad story because these are like sets that have been used in all sorts of movies and yeah, films yeah. and stuff. And we'll continue. If you're, if you're big into the whole Westworld and worried about how that's going to affect Westworld, probably not too much because season three of Westworld is not much of it's expected to take place in the theme park at all. Right. It's supposed it's to be kind of outside. So they don't have to reuse those sets. Like maybe. Yeah. You're not going to see many of the sets. Also, it's like I said, it's, it's the church sets and stuff. Sweetwater, the main town that they arrived in, that's that's still standing. That's Melody Ranch. That's near where I live. Right. Uh, so in, unless that fire dips down to where I am, uh, those sets are safe. Don't jinx um, it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, that's it for that story. Uh, next up, we had talked about Watchmen earlier. Uh, a few more details about Watchmen. Uh, first off, Gene Smart, who uh, recently has been in Legion, uh, has joined the cast of the series. Jeremy Irons, who we knew was in the series, we now know is playing an older version of Ozymandias. Hmm. Um, the, the, the guy that basically was behind the whole plan of the movie or the uh, graphic novel, if you read that. So this, this series takes place in modern times. They said it's kind of a remix, but that the events of the, of the comic did happen. So you're not going to have like, spoiler alert, you're not going to have, uh, Roshark in, in this TV series, you know? Oh. <laughs> a lot of the characters are going to be either older or dead so you're not going to see them really this is like a modern time show but if like all these events had happened in like the 80s basically right so, so basically when the comic was written yes so it's it's jeremy irons is playing an older version of ozymandias he's the only character we know of so far that's like a returning character from the comics for the entire series so far of what we know okay that's interesting yeah, they're doing something really different. It's, you know, Damon Lindelof again, who's doing it. He's, he's making a big point of trying to avoid treading the source material as much as possible because he's such a big fan of it and he doesn't want to ruin it. So he's, he's very much the idea of like kind of remixing it or taking ideas from it, themes from it and stuff. And that's the last point about Watchmen. That's where this comes in is if you've read the, the Watchmen graphic novel or if you've, you know, watched the movie or especially if you've watched the uh, extended cut of the movie that has the whole the, the pirate story thing cut into it, the animation, then you know that like the series plays a lot with the idea of like shows within shows or, you know, books within books kind of thing. Like in the graphic novel, the oh, yeah, yeah. character reading this this comic book about it's like a pirate. Funny. Because like in that universe, superheroes are real. And so people read pirate comics for escapism. Instead but there of superhero was... comics, like that was the... <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it wasn't even just that though, because it was also but, like, the plot of the comic kind of like mirrored the plot. Yeah. The actual book. But that wasn't even the only example of like a thing within a thing in Watchmen because there was also the book that uh the original
original Night Owl was writing his memoir. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And that was that was used as a way to kind of fill in some more stories about the past of superheroes. Um, they used that kind of motif to tell that part of the story. Um, and that's closer to what they're doing here, which is that now we know there's going to be a docu series within the series that's going to be about uh, Hooded Justice, who's considered to be the first costumed vigilante, and the Minutemen, which was like the first vigilante. Yeah, group. the first vigilante group. Yeah. So it, there's going to be like a documentary series about them within the show. Which is like, again, that, that's basically Damon Lindelof's way of like taking the DNA of Watchmen and applying it to the series without making a direct adaptation. It's the idea, it's like, that's a big theme in Watchmen is a thing within a thing. So of course having this makes it kind of true to the comic without actually having anything that was in the comic. So that's it for that story about Watchmen. Our last story before we go into our show discussion of The Good Place. I'm bringing this one up because of we we're doing a show discussion of The Good Place, and that's because the actress Kirby Howell Baptista, uh, who played Chidi's girlfriend Simone in this season of The Good Place, has been cast in Hulu's Veronica Mars continuation. It's interesting, of course, because Veronica Mars is Kristen Bell's show, and Kristen Bell's the main the good, place the good place is, yeah, is also Kristen Bell show. So yeah, so yeah, so it, it's you got oh. that uh, Kristen Bell connection for for Kirby showing up in uh, yeah, in Mars. Plus, I just like the idea that I can now say that Veronica Mars now features Kirby. <laughs> Yes. Even though I'm using it incorrectly. Everyone is here. Yeah, everyone Veronica, is here. Veronica Mars for Smash confirmed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's been some other news for the Veronica Mars remake, though, as well. There's Since the last time we talked about it, a lot more actors, original actors from the series have been confirmed. The actor who played Dick Casablancas is back again. That's been confirmed. We knew his father, the, the guy who played his father, was going to be back. So we, it was pretty obvious he was going to be back because he was a much bigger character character than his father there's was an, in the series there's an actor on sabrina who plays like the principal i could swear that's uh he was in pitch it from uh um that's uh what's his name from uh, uh perfect strangers it is isn't it yeah and i could swear he was like on veronica mars too he might have been he might have there's a lot of uh, actors that you like when you think about veronica mars there's a lot of actors that you might kind of forget about that were in it right um, one of those being for the the continuation is max greenfield who you've most recently probably seen in um, New Girl is oh, yeah. returning as Deputy Leo, who was kind of like the the deputy that Veronica kind of had like a little flirtatious relationship with in the series. He's back. He's another returning character. And then another new actor besides Kirby is Patton Oswalt will be joining the cast of the series as well. Nice. So lots of all the old people back pretty much like like Deadwood um, and, and a few new people too. So it's exciting. Looks like it's going to be good. It has all the ingredients now we just have to make sure that Hulu doesn't take all those ingredients and fuck it up somehow. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like it might be pretty good. So, but that's it for our new stories. Let's move on to the good place. This is episode th- uh, or season three episode. Um, I, I believe we'll just say this is episode J. <laughs> episode J. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on the uh, Jeremy Baramy timeline. Yes, on uh, the Jeremy Baramy timeline. Uh, the episode's titled The Worst Possible Use of Free Will. This is 100% Eleanor centric. As it, the last episode was Eleanor centric, well, we're getting more Eleanor centric than even last episode. But so, yeah, this one's completely Eleanor centric, whereas the other one kind of split it between Eleanor and uh, Tahani. This one's all Eleanor. It's interesting though because it, it seemed like this was going to be a Chidi centric story. I believe you even called that, like saying, "Oh, yeah. this it's going to be Chidi," because basically the last episode ended with Eleanor finding out that she and Chidi were in love in the good place and where the, the bad place that was disguised as a good place in one of the loops <laughs> that Michael erased. The show just gets confusing. Yeah. So in one of those loops, there was a moment where, where she said, I love you to Chidi and Chidi said, I love you back. He didn't hesitate and weigh the options. He just said it back. And it was, it was about like how this was like the perfect timeline for the two of them. And it, like all the others got wiped out. And so Michael, Michael finally revealed this to her. Eleanor wanted to see that that she wanted to to, to relive those memories to to learn those memories 
Well, and, Eleanor's, uh, Eleanor's thing is, when Michael tells her this, she is in disbelief because Eleanor believes she is not capable of feeling love towards anyone. Mm-hmm. Not like actual, you know, not actually, she, she believes she is incapable of love. And so when Michael tells her this, she is, she is in a state of shock and she needs to see it to prove it to herself. Yes. So she's she wants to, to to see this memory so she can learn it so she can believe it and then to move forward from that. So Michael uses basically the same thing that Janet was using to do the kind of like the the little spiritual VR thing they have. Yeah, yeah. Um, to try to 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 give back these memories from from the bad place from the one of these loops from the bad place and and in it you get these kind of th- these different memories. What's really I want to start off with just the funny moment, which is that they had to kind of test it by doing like a really short memory as they just chose like a memory from one of the random loops or something just as like a real quick test to get her like acclimated to being able to accept the memory from the afterlife because apparently that's like would you know has bad side effects or something and so we got like a little memory and then it cuts back and you see Eleanor most of her hair is gone she coughs and teeth come out of her mouth (laughs) (laughs) just kind of like a really funny moment of how Michael just kind of fried her yeah, because Michael's like, Michael's like, oh yeah, that's side effect of like seeing your memories from the. From There's like the smoke afterlife. coming off of her, and she's spitting out teeth, and yeah. <laughs> And then Michael's like, okay. And then he's like, okay, well, well, that, now your brains are right. Now your brain's prepared. So we can do this more and it won't happen again. And then Eleanor is like, well, hey, did I look hot when I was bald at least? And he's like, and he's, he's like, like, I'm not, I'm not designed to judge, uh, physical yeah. attraction of humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, I'm an extra dimensional being who cannot judge the physical attractiveness of humans, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, di- you didn't pull it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they end up going through uh, these memories of this loop, which is, it kind of presents like a clip show, but most of this is stuff we haven't seen. We saw the confession be- between Chidi and her when they both said they, they love each other. We we are, we had seen that scene. Right. Um, see beca- that scene. Because, because they had the, in the, in the medium place last season. Listen, because, yeah, because that was the, for the, for that reboot, that specific reboot that was the only thing we saw because because uh chidi and eleanor were in that woman's house like and she's a pervert and she was taping and she's them. a pervert and she was taping them so she she had she had that videotape of that one moment from that reboot but we didn't actually see anything from that version you know of the good place of the reboot so what we're seeing now is like what Michael shows Eleanor is the events that happened in that particular reboot that led to that moment. The key thing has to do with a moment in which, like, they were supposed to be getting pets. <laughs> and <laughs> and they, they had to choose a pet, and it was going to bond to them for life. And Which she... also included uh, mythical animals, by the way. That's yeah. important. To, to... Like penguins, according like, to Jason. <laughs> yeah, according to Jason. Like a penguin. <laughs> So penguins not a mythical animal. <laughs> of course they're not. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, so they're they're, they're can't they're, decide on a puppy. <laughs> yeah, because he's indecisive, so he can't choose between one of the puppies. And by the time he finally decides, the puppies are gone, gone, and he gets stuck with an owl that's kind of an asshole. <laughs> and the owl like rips up his arm. <laughs> yeah, the owl's just an asshole. Uh, Eleanor oh. has a, Eleanor has a lizard. That's key. It's like an iguana. Like why not? Jason picked out a penguin. We see the penguin in like a jersey later, and it, <laughs> and then Tahani's animal. <laughs> So Tahani picks out something I think called a mirror centaur. Yeah. Which is like a centaur that takes the form of its owner. Yeah. So it's a centaur version of Tahani that's just constantly bitching about Tahani. Yeah. Who who's even actually worse than Tahani. Yeah. <laughs> you can believe it. <laughs> so this is of course this is actually the bad place, disguised as the good place. So all of these spirit animals are like designed so that they'd pick them and they'd make them miserable. Yeah, they they somehow talk- Jason's just perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's all about kind of like, yeah, the, these these things causing them to be tortured. Yeah, that's why um, uh, Tahani Mirror Centaur is horrible. And that, and also why Chidi's owl rips up his arm. And also and, why Elnor's lizard runs away. Yes. 
and uh, the lizard running away. By the way, in I guess in the sequence, I didn't notice it. And you're not like a... I don't think you've watched much Parks and Recreation, so you probably wouldn't even have the knowledge to go off of to notice it. But apparently, like I read this afterwards, Little Sebastian, which is this like miniature like horse, I think, or donkey, I can't remember, um, from Parks and Recreation that was like constantly in that show. Like the this beloved like animal that was like the, the mascot of the town or something mm -hmm. was apparently one of the animals at the <laughs> in oh, this thing. That's which, cool. They've been doing all, they do this like constantly. Like the, the safe that Jason got stuck in and died in was made by Swanson Safe Company. It's a <laughs> reference to Ron Swanson. And, and so they do this a lot, but so little Sebastian, but that raises some questions because it, it makes you go like, okay, so does that mean that, uh, of course little Sebastian would be in the good place, but wait a minute, that was the bad place. Yeah, that was the bad place. <laughs> what did little Sebastian do? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that's uh, um the pet angle ended up driving um Chidi and Eleanor closer because when Eleanor was looking for her um for her lizard, her iguana, everybody was going to an event to become their pets. And so Chidi had a chance to become an owl and fly. Yes. Which he was excited for, and then, like, you know, Eleanor was, like, jealous of and everything, and, and, but. Eleanor had to miss it. And this is something that we saw in like the first season. There's a lot of the torture on Eleanor was like having her miss out on things. Yeah. Like yeah. having her get guilted into picking up trash, uh, uh, which causes her to miss her flying yeah. lessons. Yeah. That know? was like a big thing. Like, uh, the first season, like Eleanor constantly having to miss out on fun things, right? Like Michael would announce something super fun and then Eleanor would miss out on it. This was a continuation of that. This was Michael announcing something super super fun and then forcing Eleanor to miss out on it to torture yes. her. But Chidi ended up, you know, going in, instead of having this super fun experience of turning into his owl and flying and stuff. Instead, he went to go to um, Eleanor's side to, you know, knowing that she was missing her lizard to help her find her lizard or just to spend time with her. And this is kind of what sparked off the relationship. And so we see kind of just different kind of events during this loop that, that led to it. And then we get, we get pulled out from that and there's a moment like she's like, wait a minute, there's, there's more. What, what aren't you showing me? And it turns out Michael didn't want to show her a part of the memory because it painted him in the worst possible light. And he didn't want, he, he just, he didn't want to show them evil Michael. Yeah. Um, but basically it was the moment in which Eleanor and Chidi faced off against Michael and said, it doesn't matter if you wipe our memories, we're going to find each other again. You know, everything's, you know, we're going to get together again. And then Michael goes on a rant about how, you know, they didn't find anything. He manipulated everything. Everything that they did was a manipulation of, of his and they won't find shit. Basically it was like him like ranting off on them, but before resetting them finally and ending that loop. Mm -hmm. And this leads Eleanor with all of her self doubt already and all of her like de not wanting to accept that she was loved. It leads her down this path of determinism. The idea that, you know, fate, every, everything's already set. This all powerful being in this case, Michael set everything up. There's no free will. She, she didn't actually, there was no actual love between her and Chidi. It was all part of a plot. And so now you have Michael, the one that basically was ranting in favor of that idea before in this loop, now basically having to work to try to dissuade her from that philosophy. Yeah. So Eleanor, Eleanor sees that. Eleanor sees like the proof, right? But she immediately puts up her walls, mm -hmm. which is basically like she doesn't want to accept she doesn't want to accept that, that she ever felt love for anybody as a fact. So she immediately puts up walls, denies it, and denies the entire concept of free will, and uses the fact and uses the fact that Michael manipulated them, manipulated her as sort of like a reasoning or justification for why that moment with Chidi wasn't real. And yeah. so the entire episode is basic, basically goes on from there. Basically like Eleanor arguing that free will doesn't exist and that she never actually felt love for anybody and is incapable and Michael trying to prove her wrong. Yes. So that's like, once we get through that flashback, it's about to go through, by the time the flashback ends and we get all that, we're probably about halfway through the episode. Yeah. Um, and the rest uh, of the episode is, is him trying to convince her. Funny things. Uh, they're, they're at a library initially and then uh and then the librarian like there's several things too like first of all it's tostino's public library <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, second of all, like, there's other things too. Like, uh, like Michael is like, it's like, I'll sw- no, Michael is like, I, I didn't manipulate you and GD into falling in love. Look, I'll, I'll swear to it. I'll swear on a Bible. There's, there's, there's one in the health, in the, uh, sex ed section. It's the only book in that section. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then the librarian telling them, telling them, we, we're, you guys gotta go. We're closing soon. And they use this, and they use this place for, for, to shoot porno after, after hours. Like immediately <laughs> after, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like immediately after. <laughs> and then they go Which to a, a diner. running gag, yeah. Yeah. They go to a diner and then the lady like tells them the same thing. It's like, okay, we're closing and they use this place to shoot porno right after. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so they have these, this kind of funny running gag with that that we, we see twice there. But um, at that diner, that's when Michael finally, I uh, kind of at the end, end of his rope, kind of like th- pours a drink over her head and basically uses that to say that you know, well look, I I have just displayed free will to do this, and through this and through finally kind of getting angry with her about about trying to kind of dissuade her from determinism, he's finally able to kind of get through to her and to have her kind of admit that there he says he's going to go and pick up his friends and he's with her and and they kind of is able to finally get through to her that that um this is her walls this is her defense mechanisms and not 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 an issue of actual a lack of free will but just her defense against hope basically it's it's her her holding off against hope and and they, they finally break through to this and they come up with a plan because eleanor says well you know let well let's you know we need to go bigger than what our plan was to to try to save people before because michael's like oh we can go back to this now and she's like no we need to go bigger yeah and uh Basically, what she suggests is that they need to find a template. They need to find somebody that they can use as a source for others to emulate. Say, like, this is the person that's like a perfect candidate for the good place. And now what traits of this person can we can we get other people to emulate to get them into the good place as well? Right. And Michael says, uh, we have a place. Let's we're going to hit the road, go to rural Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Which I'm really looking forward to just because of how mercilessly they made fun of both Florida and and Nevada. Uh, it makes me think that rural Canada is going to be like a a real tweet, uh, a real treat. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a treat. And then we see uh, the demons. They make they make a makeshift uh, portal to to Earth, mm-hmm. and the head of the demons there, Sean, and the one uh, woman from uh, the first season. Yeah, from the first two seasons, Vicky, who or yeah, Vicky. in the first season was real Eleanor. Yeah, um, in the first season was real Eleanor, and the second season after the bad place reveal was uh, Vicky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's the uh, demon that basically wanted to take control away from Michael. Yeah, for that bad place run and managed to kind of get the other demons on her side before. Which is basically what caused Michael to decide to team up with the oh, humans. Oh yeah, that's right. Because she which in turn to led go. led them to trying to um, Try convert to, uh, him into a good person, which is what turned him into who he is now. Right, right. So she's kind of an important character. And he he brought her back in. They they, they kind of like wheeled in her pod. <laughs> they, yeah, they wheeled in her pod. She'd been potted up since like season two. <laughs> <laughs> so they wheel in her pod because they build the portal and like the one demon is like you know ask Sean to like go through it and Sean you know ho- hoping he'd just die basically yeah yeah you know, trying to trick him into killing himself and Sean being too smart for that is like uh, no and he wheels <laughs> Vicky in to have her. To have her do it, you know, because if she dies and cares, if she doesn't, oh, okay, well, then it's safe. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all she's there for. <laughs> but she crosses, she crosses through it and she survives. And so, and she now ends up on Earth. you have demons on Earth. They've breached Earth. Yep, they've breached Earth. And uh, then you have uh, our, our protagonist are heading out to rural Canada to find a perfect candidate for the good place. And then you have demons on Earth hoping there to muddle their plans somehow yep. um, and exert their own influence. So you have kind of another shift because this isn't just the typical path that we've had for the, like the last three episodes of, of trying to, to save people. This is like a, a, a slightly different path that the series is taking. I know that um, Fried over in, on Game Witness and he's, he's podcasted with us, I think on the Nintendo podcast before we've done. 
he's he's saying he's calling an apocalypse by the end of the season. He's saying <laughs> you have demons invading the earth and you have a messianic figure, yeah, the person that they're going to try to emulate. And I think that's that's very likely to be the case. Um, right. I've heard I've heard other people suggest that this is going to eventually lead to maybe next season being that like the whole afterlife is basically ruined because of what they've done. Well, probably. And that they have to kind of like redesign it so that the next season might be them rebuilding the afterlife and trying to figure that out. Yeah. So basically them doing their own loops in the way Michael did his loops. That would be interesting to see it go yeah, that way. To try to figure that out. So I've, I've seen other people kind of bring that up as a possibility for what next season could be. One thing yeah, I, I could totally it. see an apocalypse happening as a way to end the season. Well, Just well, because The Good Place goes, they'll do crazy things. You know? Yeah, yeah the, one of the reasons I love The Good Place is because it, it's constantly reinventing itself. Yes. It's, it's, not, it's not afraid to like reboot itself. It's the Madonna of, of comedies. Yeah, it's the Madonna <laughs> of ca- comedies, yeah. So, I mean, so they're not afraid to do, but that means they're not afraid to do crazy shit or afraid of, the, you know, you know, ruining like the status quo because yeah. there is no status quo. There's a status quo for like a season and then some crazy shit happens and then we're, we're, we're somewhere else completely. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> So yeah, I, I so I love that this is a show that truly anything could happen. Yes, I'm definitely I'm super excited about where it's going to go um moving forward in the next couple of weeks and what this is going to be because honestly, I can say like I've I've liked I there's not been a single episode of the good place that I haven't liked. I'll say that straight out. But these kind of like earthbound kind of episodes haven't really necessarily been my favorite. A lot of people share that opinion. Yeah, about- so I'm, I'm eager to see them kind of go and in kind of more like weird supernatural kind of directions because you know you don't you don't have things like Janet being able to just kind of pop things into existence or you know like these kind of elements aren't there you know you don't you don't have uh, Janet creating a new boyfriend who has like bells where his genitalia is <laughs> you know? like you don't have that in this version of the good place you have this more normal kind of world and it ends up being that the parts we find the funniest are like the fact that in this town when the library closes, they immediately start shooting porno there, or that there's a, that taxis in Jacksonville are monster trucks. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Or that, you know, um, Eleanor's mom lives in a town in Nevada called Tarantula Springs, you know? Yeah, I love it because, like, everything in The Good Place, it's like it's like a hyper-realized version of, like, all the stereotypes you associate with those places. <laughs> yeah, and that that's the kind of stuff that draws us in the most as far as the humor. But that's, even as crazy and off the wall as all of that is, it's, it's downright tame compared to, um, like, well, what we've... Like yeah, yeah because, like, like what was happening I, when I, they were actually in the I afterlife. think this episode puts that into greater re- relief, too, because when they had the flashbacks to what was happening in the good place with Eldor and stuff, and you got, like, Tahani's mirror centaur. Exactly, yeah. That, that's something that's missing from these Earthbound episodes, you know, that kind of craziness. <laughs> that they could only fit into the season via a you know a memory of the good place. Yes, so I'm 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 excited to see them kind of go in in a different direction. So um, as much as I like, I said I still like I've still liked every episode. These last like yeah. three episodes have been some of my least favorite of the oh, show, yeah, it's not like the and they're still great episodes. episodes. Oh, it's bad though. No. Still yeah. great. It's just not as funny and off the wall as it was when when they could when anything went. You know, so yeah. I'm. I'm kind of so, eager to see them kind of do something I, again, kind of crazy again. again. They're kind of again they're kind of pinned against the wall, and they yes. do their best when they're pinned against the wall because they're in a situation now where nobody can go back to the afterlife because they're going right to hell, right? Mm-hmm. We can't let these characters go to hell, so what do we do? And I think your idea of, well, the afterlife is just going to get completely wrecked and they're going to have to rebuild it, I think is brilliant and I think solves that issue and gets them back to the afterlife. To, to where they're not just going to hell and getting tortured. Yes. But yeah, so that, that brings an end to this week's discussion of The Good Place. So uh, let's talk about what's coming up in the week ahead. So we're recording this on Saturday. We've we've gone from recording on Thursdays to recording on Saturdays, and these usually aren't even going up now till Monday. So we've had these weird delays on the podcast. Still doing them every week, but it's just coming out a little bit later. So when we talk about what's coming up in the week ahead, it's a little off. Like we're talking about what started on Friday, which was yesterday when we recorded, but by the time the podcast 
will be out on like Monday. It's like, yeah, that's that's not coming out. That's been out. But uh, <laughs> so Friday, November 9th, 2018, Beat debuted on Amazon Prime. Patriot returned to Amazon Prime. Medal of Honor, the miniseries, uh, debuted on Netflix. And Ro- Room 104 returned for its second season on HBO. That's like a anthology series, like the Twilight Zone-esque type anthology, not like American Horror Story. Then on Sunday, November 11th, 2018, that's tomorrow for us right now. But by the time podcast is up, they already, they already have passed. Uh, Sally Forever is on HBO. Then on Monday, November 12th, 2018, the second season of Mars hits National Geographic. It's kind of like a documentary slash drama. Like it has dramatized science fiction about, you know, what what it would be like to take people to Mars. But then it's also intercut with like documentary stuff about what it would take to get to Mars. But that's back for its second season on National Geographic. On Tuesday, November 13th, Warrior comes to Netflix. On Wednesday, November 14th, Origin debuts on YouTube Premium. This is another one of uh, YouTube's like bigger budget plays, uh, the big sci-fi play. This one has uh, Tom Felton, who was in uh, The Flash. Flash last season, I believe, wasn't it? That he was on. He was on. Uh, he was on the Savitar season. That was two seasons ago, I think. Okay. But yeah, and, and he was Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter movie, so he's in that series. And then, lastly, on Friday, November sixteenth, the Kalmanski method comes to Netflix. That's from the creator of uh, The Big Bang Theory and the theme song to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> then Narcos Mexico comes to Netflix. So this is if you've seen Narcos, it was about. Pablo Escobar, and then after his death, it was about other drug cartels in Colombia. This is about drug cartels in uh, Mexico, as the name applies. It's Narcos Mexico. So Netflix is officially pulling a CIS or CSI. I mean, where they have they, they have the main na- Narcos, and now they have Narcos Mexico, like CSI and CSI New York and CSI Miami. So pretty soon we're gonna have you know Narcos Johannesburg. <laughs> um, also on that day, Shira and the Princess. Of Princesses of Power comes to Netflix. It's a reimagining of the classic 80s cartoon. And uh, The Bisexual comes to Hulu, which is like a new edgy drama series about sexuality, as you'd probably guess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's, it's the, as the name implies. Uh, next week, Hopefully, if all things go well, we're going to be talking finally about Daredevil Season 3, and we should be having some guests with us to discuss that. So that might change. If it does, then we'll talk about The Good Place. If not, then The Good Place is going to be delayed another week our discussion of that episode. And I believe there isn't an episode of The Good Place airing on Thanksgiving. So we'll be talking about next week's episode the week after by itself without talking about another episode or something. But we're still working out details about (laughs) what we're doing on the podcast in the next couple of weeks in relation to doing Daredevil. And we also eventually want to do a Castlevania and stuff. So we're still kind of trying to figure that out. We think it just works best usually when we dedicate an episode to talking to about about a, a full Netflix series and trying to do that and cram in a discussion of an episode like uh like the good place just because it it just gets to be too much but yeah so if if all goes according to plan next week is going to be daredevil season three discussion but that's it for the podcast so you can reach me on twitter i'm at tyson gifford you can reach will he is at voxel hero you can check out our facebook page and our youtube channel as well as our site thetotalscreen.com you can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like itunes or Pocket Cast. and the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our youtube channel thank you everybody for listening good night good night if you would like to reach out to us and make a comment Send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best 